Thanks everybody for joining me here today. Um, my name is Noah Mashin, I'm a solutions architect with DQ, as Laura said. Um, and we're gonna kick off here talking about uh, automating web accessibility testing, right? Um, so, you know, as, as the title states, changing, changing things is hard. Changing the way we do things is hard. Um, and uh, it, as it turns out, uh, when it comes to automating accessibility testing and web accessibility testing, it, uh, it doesn't have to be hard. You know, um, there, are, there are tools out there that allow us to um, create a sustainable uh, accessibility testing program within, you know, the, the development organization and structures that we've got in place already. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So just for a little bit of context, um, you know, and I'm sure a lot of the people uh, uh, on this webinar are familiar, but, you know, historically accessibility testing has been something uh, that kind of happens after a, a, a you know, digital property is kind of put together, right? Most accessibility activity is conducted sort of at the end of the life cycle. So we're, we're, we're looking at a slide here right now, which is, is showing an uh, agile, agile-ish uh, development process. And we kind of have accessibility uh, put all the way to the right of that development process or timeline. So um, at DQ, when we talk about um, accessibility and what we try to evangelize in the community in general is, you know, to, to, to make accessibility more sustainable um, is to sort of integrate that process into uh, the development life cycle. So as we move to this, this next slide, I've got that same agile diagram and we start looking at ways that you can inject um, accessibility testing and thinking about accessibility inclusion at almost all facets of the development process. So there are ways to design um, uh, to, de de to design wireframes and stuff like that uh, with accessibility in mind. Um, there are ways to, you know, uh, develop and, and test it during development mid sprints with accessibility in mind and, and kind of during QA and, and all these other places where you can do that. Today, specifically, uh, we're going to be looking at um, world, uh, uh, you know, automation and testing. So we're kind of, we're kind of thinking in the mind of the developer you know, how, how can I be testing for accessibility during development? How can I integrate testing? You know, how can I leverage automation so that my accessibility testing, you know, happens at the same time as the rest of my testing? You know, so while there are other facets to this concept of like shifting left with accessibility, today we're primarily focused on, you know, looking at automation in the development process, you know, either, either while I'm building code or as part of a continuous integration process or something like that, how can I make accessibility part of that process uh, so that I don't have to do everything in QA or, or you know, uh, as has historically been the case, all the way at the end of the process. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to jump out of these slides um, and we're going to start taking a look at um, how tools, you know, obviously if, if we want to automate uh, this process, we're going to need to be leveraging some sort of tooling. Now, these concepts of, of shifting left and, and testing are, are, I think, general terms or, or general concepts. Um, today, we'll be kind of looking at this through the DQ lens because those are the, the tools I have at my disposal. Um, but I, I think a lot of this, you know, the, the overarching idea is to be able to make this a part of, you know, the development process as opposed to something that happens after the development process. And that's, that's a more generic concept. So, um, you know, kind of the first look at testing with automation. We're, the, 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 from, from here on out, this, this demonstration, we're going to be focusing on uh, a developer's toolkit uh, product that DQ has called World Space Attest. Um, and again, this is just sort of the lens through which I operate with automation in my accessibility testing because that, that's what I have at my disposal. But um, one of the uh, most basic implementations, and I think this is something that a lot of people are using, would be to you know, make use of something like a browser extension, um, you know, like World Space Attest has or, or similar to our Axe, you know, Axe Core Engine extension that, that exists out in the world. Um, and having the ability to, as a developer, as I'm working on a project, like, let's pretend to know as a developer for a second, and I'm working on a project, I have this, uh, you know, to-do list widget or application that I'm building, and, and I, can, I can come in and I can make to-dos, and I can mark them as done, and, it kind of checks them off like this, and I can I can clear them out. Um, and I, you know, functionally, I can go in and make sure that it works. But I want to I want to do a quick check for accessibility before I maybe check this code in or move on to the next piece of my project. 
Um, and so a browser extension allows me to, in the moment, kind of take a quick scan. Uh, and I've, I've kind of got this open. I've got my browser extension open. Um, and I can, I can click Analyze and take a scan of my project. And, and in a single sort of uh, presentation, I get all the information I need from, from the scan, right? I, I'm being told, are there any violations which can be found through automation? Um, so I see here that my one form element actually doesn't have a label associated to it, and that's, you know, that's a violation. Um, I'm, I'm able to see, uh, you know, where, where is this issue? So, if, you know, if I happen to be a sighted developer, I can use this visual highlight function. Um, otherwise, I have the option to directly inspect the node in the DOM so that I can see, you know, within my project, where is this issue? Um, and as I look at it in the DOM here, I see that, yep, there, there actually is a label associated with the input, but the, the identifier is wrong. And so if I fix this issue and go back to my extension and run that scan again, I'll see that my error goes away. Um, so that's kind of the power of having this tool um, while I'm working on a project is that I can fix the, fix the issue while my code is, and my project is still malleable. Right? It's much easier and, and cheaper, really, to be fixing this stuff during development as opposed to at the end of the development process. So if I refresh this page real quick, just because I want to see that issue again, um, some of the other information in here, which is, is super vital, uh, is, is being driven towards a solution. Right? I mean, any tool that we're using for testing um, needs to deliver all the vital information. You know, what, what is wrong? Where is it wrong? And how do I fix it? And so in this, you know, in the browser extension, we've got access to all that information. We've also got, you know, kind of built-in uh, support documentation links to understand when I click, you know, learn more, uh, we get a page that looks like this to kind of tell me, you know, in, in really deep detail, you know, what, what is this issue? Why is this issue important? What guidelines, you know, what success criteria am I, am I you know, breaking by not having a label associated with my form element? You know, what, what, what types of disabilities are affected by this particular um, issue. And then again, but, you know, probably most importantly is uh, a, a deep dive in the solution, right? I need to know how do I fix this issue? So having a tool that provides you with the information of what's wrong, where it's wrong, and how to fix it um, is pretty vital to be able to quickly driving a developer uh, to a remediation for any possible accessibility violation that can be caught through that automation. So um, the kind of next step of evolution on this concept, you know, here we're leveraging a browser extension where the automation is the fact that, you know, I can use a single click to scan and it does an automated scan of my page. If we want to then automate that and kind of make it part of some larger testing structure or maybe drive this, this API, drive this scan through multiple steps, that's kind of the next step of evolution, right? How do I, how do I take scans through multiple pages or multiple screen states without having to manually you know, type in a to-do and then take another scan and then mark it as done and take another scan, et cetera. So with that in mind, uh, you know, we as part of our toolkit have developed uh, a, a command line interface for this attest API. Uh, we, we call uh, a get or the attest getter, which is this command line interface that operates on a config file. And that allows me to create sort of a, a recipe or script for a test to be able to operate out. So, um, you know, we, we've created this AGET command line interface that operates off this recipe. Uh, it's, it's a near natural language scripting uh, language. It's very similar to Gherkin. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Gherkin, um, but in this way, I'm able to tell AGET, uh, again, through this simple JSON config file to say, you know, go to this, go to this place, go to this page, and then do these actions. And, and the actions can be things like, analyze this page and then, you know, mark, mark the results as landing state. And then type this value into this element. And here we're just using the CSS selectors from the project. And it's a lot of just sort of copy and paste, right? You know, type this here, click that thing, take a scan, call the results this, click this element, click this element, and go through these actions. You could imagine creating this type of script for any sort of data-driven user flow in your project if you're doing an add to cart flow or something like this. So having a utility that allows you to automate, you know, these sort of user flows or collections of pages and gather that scan data, um, you know, again, very powerful. Say I'm, I'm working on a flow instead of a, a simple widget and I want to be able to make changes to my project and then scan that flow in the same way every time to understand, 
um, you know, am I, am I creating more accessibility violations? Am I fixing accessibility violations? And a get, you know, again, the attest getter is, is a tool that allows you to be able to do that uh, and to do so very quickly. And so, you know, I've got this script set up uh, to use my to-do list project and, and boot it up and take a scan and add things to the to-do list and take another scan um, and then mark them as done and take a final scan. Um, and then I get to kind of see uh, a report, right? I'm going to be given a, a, uh, an HTML report or an XML report, depending if I want it to be human readable or, um, you know, maybe ingested into some other reporting structure. Um, you know, I have those kinds of options. So uh, if I pull up a terminal really quick and, and fire that off, um, you know, we'll see that it's going to boot up. Uh, here I'm using Chrome and Chrome driver. It's going to run through the steps that I told it to, load the page, take a scan, build a to-do list, take a scan, mark it as done, take another scan, um, and then tell me it's done. And once it's done, I'll be given a report, right? So here I'm looking at an HTML report, which is giving me all that same information we were getting from uh, the browser extension. It's just sort of a different presentation. So here you see I've got, I had three scans in my script and I've got three different sort of checkpoints in my pro, uh, report. Uh, and again, same information. Do you know what are the violations I've got? Where are the violations occurring? So it's giving me a list of the nodes where this particular violation happened. Um, and again, a, a more info link to drive me to support documentation to be able to understand, you know, what, you know, why is this an issue and how do I solve it? Right, that right back to DQ University where all my documentation lives. So here we're, we're now automating the automated scan, right? We're taking this and making it part of some more data-driven user flow. And th this is a, 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 you know, a simple command line interface, so it can even be integrated into like a CI process, like in Jenkins or Bamboo, um, and you know, where the, these utilities, every time a build is run, uh, you have the opportunity to use the command shell to execute you know, calls to something like AGET and say, after the build, run this thing to make sure that that user flow still works. Um, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. Um, the kind of uh, goal, uh, I guess, or you know, the, what the, the, the most, or you know, yeah, the kind of goal is to, to be able to take uh, a structure like an end-to-end -end type of uh, testing and integrate accessibility as part of that. Um, so if, if you're an organization or a developer who has put a lot of time and kind of blood, sweat, and tears into building you know, some sort of end-to-end -end or integration testing for your project, uh, and you'd love to make accessibility part of that, um, you know, a toolkit like a test is, is ideal there as well because you, know, you can make uh, an API call in the, you know, while you're working through your end-to-end -end tests and, and be able to gather that same accessibility test data um, by leveraging uh, that existing testing structure, right? So to make that accessibility testing sustainable, um, you really wanna be able to reuse the testing structures that are already in place and gather the accessibility test data at the exact same time. So in this instance, while we're looking at my same to-do app, um, which happens to be an, an Angular application, so I'm using Protractor as my kind of testing automation structure. I've, I've built up a very uh, simple script to be able to run some functional tests. So again, this particular script is not testing for accessibility at all. We're really just testing that when I load my application that it has a title, right? So we've got this sort of it statement that says should have a title. Then the second check is that um, we're going to add a to do and we want to check that we actually added to do, added a to do so it you know it should add a to do and then the third functional check is that it should mark the to do as done right so i've got three functional sort of checks and steps in my my spec file um, what's cool about a test is that i can very easily add in um, my accessibility checks uh, by pretty much copying and pasting an API call at each of those steps. So here we're looking at an updated spec file that incorporates my attest um, API call. So in that same, you know, should have a title step, I'm able to call attest.analyze and log the results. So let's, let's check it has a title and let's scan it for accessibility. Then we're going to add a to-do and we're going to scan uh, whatever new screen real estate, whatever new thing occurred, I'm going to scan that for accessibility. And same to be uh, same thing for the, the marking it as done. So here we're kind of reusing that that end to end testing structure, and we're just going to be adding in some accessibility testing as part of it. 
And so then we can uh, very similarly uh, from the command line, if I can remember which window it was in here, we can fire that test off and, and you know, again, it's gonna load up a browser. We're going to uh, run through those tests and we'll be given the same sort of HTML report, right? So again, what, you know, these are the three checks we did. These, there's lists of what were the violations found, where were they, and that link back to more, you know, more info to, to know where to find them. So kind of taking this up to the, sort of the nth degree as we've got a couple minutes here, you know, you can see that because we're exporting not only an HTML report, but we've got the option to put out, you know, JSON payloads or XML documents, we can make this part of something like your Jenkins project. So if you've got a CI server set up and you're using that, you know, you can be porting in the data um, <clears throat> to that as well. So that if you've got reporting structures in place and you're getting build data already, you can make your accessibility test data part of that same reporting structure. Similarly with SonarCube, maybe you want to incorporate accessibility as code quality checks. You know, we, we've got integrations with SonarCube to be able to build quality profiles and quality gates based off of, you know, your, your uh, accessibility results. So we can kind of integrate there. And then as is usually the case, you know, ultimately somebody wants to be able to visualize this data. And so uh, probably the newest feature of, of WorldSpace Attest is the ability to export that data into a custom built dashboard. And so if you would like to set up, you know, establish custom metrics and tracking mechanisms to be able to look at your accessibility scores and data over time, um, you know, Attest is gonna be able to put out data to uh, integrate with the dashboard environment just like this. And so this is, this is one, one example of the dashboard. Obviously these could be built and tailor-made for you know, whatever industry or, or, or uh, metrics you have established. Uh, so with that, I, I believe we hit our, our 10 minute mark and are gonna open up for questions, Laura? That's correct. So I don't have any so far. So just, if, this would be a great time if you have questions. Okay, one just came in. So of the 32 WCAG 2.0 AA criteria, how many does DQ um, definitively check? <laughs> that's a it's a good question. It's it's right around half. You know the the a test is using the Axe Core engine rule set, right? And so we're we're checking through our sets of rules and the relationship of of kind of checkpoints or rules to success criteria is is sort of a many to many relationship. But through automation um, in any given project, you can expect to capture you know forty to sixty percent of of bugs through that automation. Uh, and I believe it's right around half of the success criteria are at least touched by the automated rule set. Okay, great. And then here's another really good question is, um, do we have an NPM module for world space to test? Uh, yes, so there is, um, you know, we've, uh, world space to test has got, you know, APIs for Java, JavaScript and Ruby. We've got things packaged up for Maven or NPM. Um, I think those are your kind of two biggest ones, but yes, there is an NPM module. Okay, and then what's the difference between this tool and just using Axe? Uh, and, uh, so Axe, again, I'm, I'm, that's a, a fun question. You know, Axe is our open source project, our, uh, that, that DQ kind of, I think it was five years ago we open sourced Axe, uh, put it out into the world. Uh, the Attest uh, toolkit is really built off that Axe core engine. You know, we're using the same rules um, however, a test is really built for enterprise ready, you know, type of organizations. So it's, it's going to have uh, more integration options in terms of the different types of APIs that are exposed. Uh, it's got a lot more like reporting options. It's, it's designed to be integrated into larger testing structures. And so you've got things like uh, there's an attest, uh, there's a node service that consumes the raw data and spits out the HTML reports and the XML reports. So you're getting, you know, enhanced reporting, enhanced support documentation, um, and you're also getting options like custom rules. So maybe you want to choose different rule sets. Um, maybe you want to augment the rule sets and create your own sets of rules. These are all the kind of uh, enterprise level features that have been married uh, into the attest, you know, the licensed version of that, that open source rule set and, and underlying uh, technology. Okay, great. And then is it possible to use this um, world space to test automated checker without using the command line? 
Uh, I mean, there is the browser extension. Um, that's obviously outside of the command line. Um, and then uh, really the, the, you know, a lot of the other stuff, because it's really tailored for the developer, it's meant to be, you know, either integrated into some sort of testing structure, whether that's end to end or unit testing or integration testing. Um, but, but largely it's, it's kind of there in, in the developer environments um, as you know, as well as the browser extension, which is more, you know, web, obviously web-based and, and a, a friendlier UI. Okay. And then we have a question about, um, if you could talk, we have a couple of questions that are wondering how a test works with WorldSpace Assure and then also how a test works with WorldSpace Comply and is WorldSpace a Comply a, compl a complement to WorldSpace to test or vice versa? Yeah, so there's a couple questions in there and you may have to remind me of them, but a test and a sure are really, um, you know, it's kind of a one-two punch from a testing standpoint, right? WorldSpace Attest is a toolkit that's really meant to integrate with the developer's world and tackle as many, uh, tackle as many bugs and, and things that can be caught through automation as possible. And then the idea is, you know, the, the first thing you do with Assure when you're working on a project with Assure is you actually run an automated scan um, on that page or project or component or whatever using this, you know, conceivably using the same rules that we're running a test. So if, if the developers were running everything, you know, and scanning it all with a test and, and making sure that, you know, before things got to QA that the attest scans came through clean, then the first step in Assure would be to run an automated scan and you'd find no, no errors through automation. And so then everything else you're doing in Assure is, is just checking all the other checkpoints, right? So I think Assure has got 66 checkpoints and some number of them are satisfied purely through automation. So if you're, if you're using a, a test and you're remediating, remediating all that stuff that, that is caught with a test and development, then by the time it gets through QA, you've, you know, you've chunked off a big number of, of checkpoints and, and things that need to be tested um, there. Uh, integrations between comply and a test, um, I mean, the, the, the attest browser extension is actually the, you know, is, is uh, leveraged with comply as well. Um, there, are, there are functions built into that browser extension that are comply specific, um, but it also allows you to share um, issue lists. So if you've caught issues with comply scans and you then take those issues and maybe assign them to a, a remediation, you know, engineer, that engineer can use the browser extension, download that list of issues, and then use the browser extension to identify those issues on the page to, to know exactly where they are and, 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 and how to fix them. Perfect, thanks. Um, so we have a couple of questions about WCAG 2.1 rule set and, and when we see that'll be integrated in the near future. Do you think that's yeah, the, a test soon? Sorry, what'd you say? Do you think that will be part of a test soon? Um, as soon as a, 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 a relative term, you know, I, I can't put dates on it, but, you know, D, DQ as an organization, um, you know, we, we employ one of the largest collections of accessibility subject matter experts in the world. And, and we're very involved in that whole, uh, we're involved in that 2.1 process. And uh, obviously we are now hard at work at integrating those, uh, those additive rules into our, you know, tools and, and products. Um, and, you know, I believe in, in, you know, in the near term, we, you know, we will start seeing rule sets coming through acts and attest, uh, that start incorporating some of that 2.1, uh, checks. Um, I don't, I don't have obviously a, a deadline or date that I can say for sure we'll have full support, but I, I mean, we're obviously hard at work on it. Um, and we'll start seeing that creeping into our tools and rule sets, um, very near term. Great. Thanks. That was really helpful. Um, another question here from Susan, what are some other automated tools for testing? Uh, for testing for accessibility, um, you know, I, I'm uh, obviously a test and AX, uh, you know, a test being the licensed version, AX is our open source tool. Um, you know, that's a really popular one out there for, for no false positives. Um, I know I hear about other free tools out there. Um, you know, a couple of quick Google searches, you can find, you know, some stuff out there. I, I hear a lot of people talk about, um, like, Wave, um, I think is a free tool. Um, and just doing a little research over, you know, everybody's kind of got a different approach to, you know, how they use those automated tools in particular. Um, and I know that, like, Axe's main, you know, one of Axe's big focus is on uh, no false positives, right? If you're going to use this tool and, and, identify any issues, 
uh, you know, we, we only create rules so that we can be deterministic and know that if something's broken, it's actually broken so that you're not being driven towards like a wild goose chase to find an issue that's not there. Um, and so I think some of, so there are, there are other automated tools out there. Um, but you, you know, I, I guess I would just say to, to kind of read up on, on their approach. Great. Thank you. Um, probably our last one here. Is it possible to have reporting from the automated uh, test reports integrate with manual testing results? Um, so that's actually, uh, that's, that's like someone's, you know, third eye viewing into the future. Um, that's, that's obviously something we're working towards to kind of create a closer, uh, closer connection between those sets of data. Um, you know, today, uh, that we don't, we don't have the kind of plumbing in place to do that, but in the near future, I mean, you'll see a dashboard just like this being able to integrate, you know, test data from a test that maybe came from, you know, your, your Jenkins server or your end end, you know, automated testing and then kind of integrated with results from, you know, maybe projects run through a short. So, um, that is, that is something we're actively working on. I don't have it today. Uh, I mean, it, all of the, the reporting and data formats that are coming out of a test and coming out of um, Assure are all, you know, friendly data formats, XML, JSON, CSV. So, you know, there, there's nothing preventing somebody from kind of piecing them together. Obviously, as a, you know, TQ, we're, we're an organization where we want to make, um, you know, like a robust, uh, well-made product out of it. So we're, we're kind of approaching that with, with that same robustness that we approach the rest of our products. Um, so it is possible and we're working on it. We just don't have it today. Great. Thanks. That was a really good, really good answer. So we've reached our, um, our time limit for the day. It's now 2 PM. Um, that went by really fast. There are a few questions that, um, did go unanswered. Don't worry though. We will be sure to respond to those via email. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, this is recorded. So a recording of this will be available on demand and will be sent to everyone in a follow-up email. Um, so with that, I wanna thank you all for attending and I wanna thank Noah for doing such a great job. Um, stay tuned, we'll be having more webinars in the future.